Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds Lena. remaining. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Slada. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Earth Shaker. Ten seconds remaining. 
Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <clears throat> Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Prepare for battle. Thirty seconds to battle. Tribute.
sure. Nightmare. First blood goes to mother. Empty calories. Bad for you. Flames will spread thrice. Denied. them slardar and no 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 no
<laughs> Your season is over. A little knife play? Dyer's top tower is under attack. So sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody that was listening out on Dota TV, still getting everything all set up. But Ritu, again, consistently farming away. There's a reason that this guy is 10 and 2 on this hero. He's very, very uh, potent in terms of being able to make plays in the late game or in the mid game and also into the late game as well. Just waiting for one Sentry Ward to get dropped over here, and you're going to be able to find the Spider and one Echo Slam. That's going to be a whole lot of gold going Schwan's way. I think this was such a great play. Like Normally, when you end up seeing the Earthshaker, he has some trouble dealing with in the early lane, but being able to switch on out the Spectre now, it does mean that she's a little bit more vulnerable, but again, you've got Haunt to be able to get your way out of there as well as the Dagger. So they're going to come and try and see if they can find some sort of initiation with no Blink up on the Slardar, though, for eh, the foreseeable future. They're really not going to be able to punish this, I don't think. So Root Gaming have been playing this exceptionally well. Queen of Pain is also going to be top of the net worth. Does look to pick on up her treads now. And just going to be sitting pretty and comfortable. Bassy being brought out to that Ember Spirit. Schwan continuing to last it under tower here and get the uh, the last hits with the aftershock proc as well. Oh, so swaggerific. Now, queen, or the, the brute is going to be able to start taking the jungle and is building towards these items. Once you end up getting an orchid potentially on her, if that is the item that she wants to go, this becomes a lot easier to dive the, the Earthshaker under tower, but I don't think... Part of me feels like that's not what she's going to go for. Oh my god, I'm so sorry about that. Queen of Pain ends up getting the kill on the Tusk. Meanwhile, one more right-click is going to be able to turn that one back around and take her out in return. The Haunt was coming in to see if she could potentially take out Brax, but not going to be able to happen. And just like that, the Queen of Pain is able to make such a huge play. Like, getting those kills are imperative for her acceleration. The fact that Lean was able to turn that back around, really, really big. Also worth noting, MSS is having his uh, Hand of Midas being brought back out to him. So he is looking to take this game a little bit longer term, at least, and maybe be able to get a couple of really key items that will end up affecting him in the, the mid game. And, you know, it's a couple of minutes before the Midas is going to end up really coming into play. But Sand King here doesn't have his ulti, but does have a lot of damage that can't come around. There's the Queen of Pain rotating in. Another couple of right clicks might be able to be enough. The Brain Sap from afar is going to be able to get that one. Nicely done there. Wow, Ember Spirit. Looking for blood. Recap 500 gold swing. He is going to remnant forward. Wants to chase this if he can. He's looking for killing Derp Derp. One more time. This is going to be able to be enough. And meanwhile, the Spectre rotating in as well. Brax is in the area. And it looks like we are going to see Ritsu get away from that one. That's the power of this hero. Like, you think about it and the fact that right now he only has a quill. <laughs> 
<laughs> Very nice jump there by the Queen of Pain. I was about to praise him, but uh, ended up getting a little bit too far forward. Again, diving on up here, the Earthshaker not to be seen. He did end up rotating, and as soon as he leaves that lane, that's going to make all the difference, and this tower is going to fall. Now all of a sudden, you're going to have MSS be able to really punish the rest of this jungle. I think that Rude are okay with this, though. You know, Spectre's still getting farm. Um, does have the Wraith Band up now as well. She's not as high up as she would really want to be and is continuing to be contested. The fact that she's had to move around for these kills uh, and not really bear fruit with them, she's only gotten the two assists, does mean that her farm is a little bit more stunted than you would want. 47 last hits, 11 minutes isn't the best in the world. It's not the worst either, but certainly not the best. And as we get back on into this one... Oh god, here we go. Sand King mid lane. Our Shaker did pick up his Tranquils now, so he just wants to be able to sustain in lane longer against this Brood. He's really their only hope for being able to deal with this when, until you end up getting something like a, you know, dust on top of the, dust on top of the Brood with a Fiend's Grip coming in behind that area. But even that, honestly, if you're running into that with all those spiders on top of you, it's really quite devastating. We'll also mention Lena now having the Yules up. She's going to be able to start making that combo work and max out Dragon Slave, max out Light Strike Array, level 2 Laguna Blade. This is the point right now where Brax can really make his presence felt. And these types of heroes across the board, you've got Broodmother who can jump on top of you in an instant. You've got Ember Spirit who's able to dole out a ton of magical damage. It looks like they want to potentially fight this one. There's the Remnant on in. Isn't going to be able to catch, unfortunately. I was looking for the Sleight of Fists. Oh, he doesn't even have Sleight of Fists. He went for the Chains but didn't quite catch it. So no points in Sleight of Fist now for, uh, for Ritsu, just opting to go for more in terms of that initial damage burst. So this obviously means that his catch potential is going to be a little bit limited, but when he does end up finding you with those remnants, it's going to be dealing significantly more damage. All right, four hero rotation down into the jungle now. Want to see if they can potentially find the slaughter and get a kill. The crush does end up connecting, but there's the jump forward. Queen of Pain is there as well. The sprint is going to mean he's getting that extra bonus damage. One more right click should be enough with the last word, and that is a kill on the slaughter. Continuing to hurt his ability to get that blink dagger that he really wants. Does have tranquils as well, a little bit different. Chuan up in the top lane now. Broodmother still keeping a lot of gold in the bank. She's really been able to take on over this jungle and start to build up the Fort Knox gold supply. <laughs> Tusk, level four. Doesn't have that burst quite yet, but does obviously have the long range initiation. There's the little TP away as he waves goodbye to us. Heads on down to the bottom lane. Still waiting for level six on this Bane. Chuan as well, hoping to be able to get a little bit more gold to build towards that Blink Dagger. Haunt on out. Are they going to be able to find anybody here? Oh, looks like they're just going to be able to keep it content for now. Queen of Pain does end up getting a kill on the Tusk. Meanwhile, the Laguna Blade turn around, able to take down that Spectre. So back and forth we go. Do they have enough to burst down this? Oh, they might actually forward this uh, Slardar. He does fall. At the end of the day, you do see the Tusk go down. The Queen of Pain and then eventually the, uh, the Spectre does fall as well. So Fight recap. Nice little win for Root Gaming yet again. They've really been able to get off to a pretty great start here. 4,000 net worth, XP lead of roughly 3,000 as well. They've been in a pretty comfortable position all game long, and I, I think that, you know, the early start of the last hit wars you saw, it, Cloud9 is obviously still in the lead there, but it's through these kills, the rotations, the, the teamwork essentially. All oh, Fiend's Grip now down on top of the Ember Spirit. If Spec can get this kill, this would be huge. I don't think that she quite has the damage though. Global Silence going to follow it up, and Ember is just going to walk away from that one. So committing a Fiend's Grip there would have loved to be able to get a little bit more damage out from that, but unfortunately. Uh, not able to find it. Oh, Queen of Pain jumping again. Sonic Wave ends up connecting. Oh, God, if the dagger would have been there, it would have been enough. Fortunately, not able to level that out against the Ember Spirit, and he gets away just by the skin of his teeth. And now two big ultis committed for that hero and weren't able to find it. Very, very frustrating. And it does look like the Quap is actually going to be going for the Orchid. You know, I mentioned in the draft that I felt like there was a chance she wouldn't have to. I am a little bit concerned now because as this game goes longer, you would expect that hopefully Spectre would be able to really take over and uh, 
get that radiance, increase the farm levels, make a huge impact in that late game. But now one of your really core heroes uh, is going to have a big impact in the mid game. But once you start getting to the later stages, that orchid is suddenly a bit of dead weight. I guess you can turn it around and hit it onto the tusk, which is pretty big. But I don't know. We will see. Time will tell. No tally on the ground. And Brack's going to be working towards that Aghanim Scepter. His farm has been really, really impressive. Lena, 8,300. Broodmother, 7,300. Just continuing to tear apart the lane. And looks like we're going to be seeing another Orchid here. Time around for the Radiant side. I do want to reveal this Blink Dagger up by Chuan now. Waiting for their moment. Dust does end up getting popped. There is the Echo Slam of Drees. Oh, <laughs> MS says it wasn't meant to be. Oh, that's why you pick Earthshaker, ladies and gentlemen. Put him in the off lane and just go to town on that Broodmother once you come around. And Oh, man, just like that. Huge gold swing. And the guy who just finished off his Blink Dagger now also has 850 gold on top of it. Absolutely beautiful. There's the jump forward by the Earth Shaker. Wasn't quite able to get his stun off, unfortunately. And while this is going on, it looks like we're going to get a push down in the bottom lane. Queen of Pain gets her own Orchid. Oh, Slardar just going to back on out. Oh, looks like Tusk is here as well, though. He does have a Yule Scepter if they wanted to reinitiate into this. But I'm going to leave Derp Derp alone for now. As he and Chuan just make their way on back to base. Global Silence is up. Haunt is down. I think that they're probably going to just have to save Global until the next time they want to jump on in here. The Orchid does come down on top of MSS. This is disastrous. He's going to go down yet again. So two quick kills in succession on top of this Broodmother. And suddenly this hero that was getting free farm in the jungle is starting to get taken out. Root looking very strong, I have to say. I was not expecting this uh, explosive of a performance from them, but the the plays have been really good in terms of consistently finding the kills that they've needed to. And, I mean, you take a look at the vision to a certain extent, and you would expect that there would be a really clear advantage in this jungle over here because of the Broodmother, but they really have been able to shut that down and playing somewhat in the dark. Chuan does have oh excuse me all right there we go that's that's kind of what you need silencer pushing forward a little bit too far and did end up going down there to the lena just a simple little combo did she actually even laguna blade yeah, okay yeah she did she did her whole combo there oh was looking for the initiation is going to be able to find the emmer now crush does end up connecting do we have another stun in a second is gonna hit no Brain Sap is going to be enough regardless. There is the Spectre Haunt coming on in. Sonic Wave on top of two. Tusk is going to end up falling as well. Queen of Pain with the double kill. Thought about going back in is MSS, but not going to be able to find it. Aghanim Scepter just now finished off. Fight recap, 1,700 gold change as well as 1,800 EXP. Just catching the end of that one, it looked for a second there like Ember might have been able to make it happen, but with no remnants out, he needed to slide a fist away the, the stun and then afterwards be able to make his way out of there and just wasn't able to happen. Too much damage coming out with the Spectre Haunt coming out. And now, after picking up four urn charges, Spectre being a part of seven kills, only dying once, this is where the farm might start taking off a little bit more. Still behind the Ember Spirit, but sort of that ticking time bomb of the radiance where all of a sudden all of your skills all of your hopes and dreams sort of grumble before your eyes brax is definitely going to need to make his presence felt here ritsu so far has been somewhat uh disabled to a large extent in this game mainly i think just by really solid play by Root. I, I think that the, the key thing here has been really effective communication, a clear game plan going in, knowing what they wanted to do and how to deal with that Broodmother, which is surprising considering it was the last pick. Of course, this can all turn around in an instant. It all really comes back to, again, being able to find that one key pick off and then take some objectives after it. They have no slouches in terms of being able to take objectives and also can probably very quickly take down Roshan. So... As far as what we're going to see here. Bane. Arcane Boots. Did get the mana buff, but it doesn't mean that mana's free. <laughs> Queen of Pain going for the BKB next as well. We do have for the Spectre, of course, saving for that relic. Earthshaker working on a Force Staff himself. 
We have Tusk. They're going to end up breaking the smoke here. He's off to the side. Echo Slam connects on MSS. There's the haunt. Fiend's gripped as well. He does end up falling after the snowball. Now SVG is nightmared on up yet again. Do we have enough to be able to catch him? The spiders were not killed there, so they're still in the middle of all of it, tearing my frame rate apart. And it looks like Ember is going to end up getting away from that one. So sorry about these issues. I swear I'm going to try and clear it up in the next game. But it looks like Chuan is going to be able to chase after and burn through a couple of those spiders. So nicely done there. Fight recap again. Another key team fight taken by Root. 6 to 17 is this gameplay, and I feel like Chuan here has really been the man who's been able to make it happen. But, and uh, to a certain extent as well also it's it's the hero choice you know it's the fact that they had this clear game plan going into it which i'll talk about until the end of time lena agonum scepter need to find a pick off here if you're able to kill a specter that is what you want to do that is the play that is the move that is the groove everything needs to be going from there <laughs> Oh, does end up connecting with the Earthshaker. Fissure, is it going to be able to be enough? Oh, nice, Yules, before the stun comes out. I think he might still be in a little bit of trouble. Force taps the spec forward again, and it looks like Brax is going to end up falling. Silencer with the last hit. Bottom lane, not able to convert on any of these other kills. Queen of Pain is hanging around, though. Was a nice little 1,200 gold swing. Doesn't end up catching the snowball, but the blink away last second. Very nicely done. Might have overstayed his welcome. Thought about re-engaging, but after the shards has dropped, they're going to leave it alone for now. Again, Spectre, Spectre, doing Spectre things. Now, the smoke is up on him. While the kill was happening up there, they weren't really able to make a ton happen in the bottom lane. Chuan TPing down here is going to make sure that that's the case. Dyer's bottom Let's take a look at this Ember, what he's been able to go towards. He's still trying to build towards that Battle Fury. It's going to help out his farm a lot. It's really the only chance that they have right now is to be able to get this Ember Spirit farmed on up and make sure that he's able to scale well into the late game. The question is, is it going to be enough? And is this Orchid going to be his demise regardless? It's going to require a ton of really solid play by this guy. And also the rest of his team being able to cover him. Rude making space around the map. All of these things need to come together for this to be able to get turned around. Net worth lead. Cloud9, where they were in the advantage, are going to be dropping now. 1,000. I can't believe they're actually that far ahead. Net worth wise. Oh, we have a little bit of a haunt coming on in now. Where are you at, Spec? Back in base. All right, there's the jump forward. Are going to be able to catch on MSS. Is going to be able to echo slam for victory. Oh, Schwan, everywhere you need to be all at once. <laughs> And at the end of the day, been very good. Spec needs to be careful right here. If they're able to find and catch here, this could this is actually the moment that they really need. Blink Dagger up on Slardar. Oh, dodging the stun is gonna be able to go on into the trees. Global silence coming out. Not gonna be able to catch again, just running away. Oh, hide and seek. Is there anybody any better? That's the real question. Goodness gracious. The smoke on up in the bottom lane. See if they're going to be able to find somebody there. As I mentioned, BKB up on the Queen of Pain. No longer going to be afraid of all of that magical damage coming on out. Or the Orchid from the Broodmother. Derp derp. And on the mechanism. Juan thought about finding a, a brood there, and this is what they need to be doing right now. You end up being able to find this Roshan, maybe take it, burst it down, find a pick off. Take a, bar take a barracks, take the top lane. You can probably do it, or at least just being able to split push it out. And the fact they were able to smoke on in there and get that one is absolutely huge. They really need this for the rest of the game to keep on going good. Spectre, as I mentioned, doing Spectre things. It's almost worth it for them, though, honestly. Like, they don't necessarily need to push right now. The only thing that could really go bad with this is if Cloud9 are able to pressure down a, a, a key objective after this Roshan. If you can keep the lanes pushed on out as root, I think that you're still fine. Nif Pain may be baiting now. Oh god, he is. Chuan is going to come on in and tear you apart, Lena. Laguna Blade does come quickly. They're not able to disengage from it, though. Too much burst damage too quickly. Now blinking or TPing away is going to be that Bane start that's how you need it to happen 1900 exp off the back of that as well as 1300 exp 100 gold i mean excuse me ember spirit now getting closer and closer to this battle fury and will that make the difference it's the real question stan king cloak earth shaker 
force and everything else. He's getting ready with the enchant totem. They're going to go back in and deny this one in a second, I do believe. Broodmother's waiting for the opportunity. If you catch the Broodmother here, that really severely hampers the ability to get any split push done. And there it is. Radiance finished. Spec with Haunt as well. Ready to go. Lena farming on out the jungle. If they get into a good position now, you've got so much damage that can come out very quickly. <laughs> Your spirit's still sitting comfortably and just now finished his battle fury. All right, so he's ready for a bit more of a fight. I, honestly, I don't think he is, actually. If you think about what the items are that the, the Dyer have at this point, that's really not capable of dealing with this. I mean, you got the mechanism up on the silencer. Radiance is up on the spec. Earthshaker has everything that he needs. But the key thing right here as well is the BKB on the Queen of Pain as well as the Orchid. She's just going to be able to tear apart that Ember Spirit if he's not careful. So they need to initiate onto the Quop. But again, if you initiate onto the Quop, she just pops BKB. Oh, God, this is going to be very difficult. Maybe if they're able to burst her down very quickly. Stun does come out. There's the haunt in the middle of all of it, though. We do get the burst on top of the Queen of Pain. The turnaround, though, Echo Slam. Everybody's getting torn apart. Brax is going to fall to the Fiend's Grip. Aegis is still up, though. Do they have enough to take down MSS? That's the real question. Three heroes dead, if you include the Aegis. Maybe Bane's going to end up going down now to Brax. The Earthshaker stun does connect at the very end. Laguna Blade's going to be enough to kill the Bane, though. And end tally, Aegis for three heroes. Spectre still alive. Kicking. Let's have the first component of what is imposing to be a Yasha. 1100 gold swing into the favor of Cloud9. And with Haunt down, maybe this is their moment. Oh my god, the spider's taking a lot of damage from that dagger. Lena's just going to be comfortable continuing to hit away here. Three stacks up on the fiery soul. <laughs> what intuition. Brax recognizing the inherent danger of his situation does blink away last second. So this is the initiation that they want. Are going to be able to get a last word down on top of the tusk. He's going to end up getting hit there as well. Is maybe going to die? Fisher ends up connecting. Brax is separated from the herd. You have global. Don't want to burn it here if they don't have to. Doesn't catch on the aftershock proc, but I think with this radiance burn, this is going to be a dead Brax in just a second or two. One more time. Again, spectral dagger. Click. Dead Lena. So what looked to be pretty good for them starting to turn back around now. That was a pretty big uh, exchange into the favor of Root. Root Mother bottom lane going to hope to do a few things here. Radiance. And you, you're getting pretty farmed up on the Brood Mother, but Tier 1 Tower is going to start to fall. I would love to see the Spectre move on into the jungle and just try and farm up right now, because he still is behind. And you take a look at the net worth. Currently... It is 11,000 on the Spect versus the 13 on the Lena. You have some inkling that MSS is over here. End up catching with the Stream of Pain. Just a little, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and then walking away from it. Does drop down the Sentry Ward as well. In MSS on this Brood. Oh, this is a problem. The Orchid ends up connecting. Do they have enough to be able to get here in time? No. Brood ends up taking... A kill away, and that's the danger right now. Really need to get something like a Ghost Scepter up on this Bane. He already has the Cloak, so that's going to help at least in terms of being able to uh, at least in terms of being able to survive through the Spawn Spiderlings nuke that comes out, but I don't know if Glimmer Cape is necessarily the, uh, the item either. I guess they don't have any reveals, so it's kind of okay. Yeah, it looks like that's what he is going to go instead. Probably a little bit better, and it fits more circumstances later. Queen of Pain does end up burning through her first BKB. They're not going to be able to find her. So I think that that's worth it. 10 second BKB charge to make sure you don't end up getting ganked. Definitely sucks that you had to use it there, but the alternative is really death. Oh, not quite able to get those stuns perfectly in combination together. Is going to haunt now. On top of the Ember Spirit. Oh, this is the danger. No mana either, and he is going to fall. Huge kill. Spectre ends up taking that one. 709 gold going her way. Oh, man. 24 to 11 right now. Huge turnaround. Cloud9 still farming significantly better. I think that the big problem that you're seeing here is that while Cloud9 are definitely farming and they're moving around the map more effectively, they can't really win fights. So they're taking towers, they're making sure that they're taking the different objectives that they want, Roshan as well, but eventually 
Root, I feel like, are going to be in a position where they're just going to be able to death ball down mid. They just, I, I guess, Cloud9, if they don't lose all of their heroes at once, maybe they're going to be able to consistently rat away Root here. It's tough to tell, though. That would be a terrible way to lose. God, I would hate that. One blink dagger, gem, everything else that a little earth shaker could want. MSS with these trees down might be being caught out if he's not careful. And this is exactly what Spectre needs to do. You move on in, get the Yasha, you get yourself comfortable, you start piling up a few more items. I have seen a few specs go Sanji and Yasha, which I don't really like, but I can understand the desire for it. I think that like Yasha maybe into heart but it kind of would be good also like being able to stay alive is going to be really important for the spec but i kind of feel like manta would be pretty solid as well particularly against that brood uh with the orchid up i mean i don't think that really you're going to be able to kill spec at this point unless you get the silence down and if she's able to get the haunt out unless you're five man ganking it's it's not really going to be super effective to look like slaughter there as well as delina were moving on over i guess the other flip side of that though is that if you get a heart uh, you're going to be able to be survive through the stuns. Queen of Pain ends up getting another kill on this Broodmother. It's to the very nice gem of True Sight up here. It's just they've had every answer that they've needed all game long, and there is the Manta picked up. So another dagger going through. This is on top of the Slardar. A little bit frustrated. Oh, Fissure ends up connecting. There's the Haunt as well. Lots of magical damage coming out on top of these heroes. The Shards are back. This is going to be Spectre end up initiating onto the Slardar if you're able to catch it. It looks like they might end up sending the Earthshaker up to the top lane. All right, not wanting to contest this one too much further. They're going to back on out and out nine, lick their wounds and <laughs> make their way out of here before they end up getting picked off yet again. 2,500 gold on this Earthshaker. It might be Octarine time. Spectre again, Manta style illusions, just gonna send them forward, keep these waves pushed out. I think that's the other thing that I didn't mention earlier is the Spectre illusions are also really great for being able to make sure you're t uh, pushing on out those lanes, which is something that you need to be able to do against uh, against the rat Dota. 1400 gold now up on this Lena. Well, Lardar blinking back. Should be fine. B is probably going to be the next item up on him. And as I mentioned, the Ember Spirit now, with the Manta style, this negates a little bit the Queen of Pain's Orchid, to a large extent. And this item really, pretty much is just going to be a team fight item now. It can't really be used a ton for pickoffs unless you're finding somebody other than the Ember Spirit. And the Lena as well. The Lena has the the um, the Yule Scepter, so another hero that's going to be able to sort of deal with that somewhat effectively. Do we have anybody else right now? Looks like the Brood might be going for BKB next, as is the Sarder. So really, it's only going to be effective against the Tusk pretty soon. That's what I was talking about, is maybe as this game goes later, the Queen of Pain, while you are having the Spectre, dole out a lot more damage. Oh god, this could be tough. He does have the Manta, though, so yeah, he's going to always be able to run it back. This is the thing that's a little bit tough, though, is that while your spec does scale really, really well, you have an item that's sort of invested in this Queen of Pain that's becoming more or less useless. So she really needs to get something else and actually should have something on the courier here in just a second. Mystic Staff coming out. Very interesting. Uh, maybe into a Shiva's Guard? That'd be pretty good against the Brood Spiders. I like that idea, potentially. I wouldn't have minded an Aghanim Scepter also, just to make sure that those waves are continuously cleared out. Yeah, that is going to be a Shiva's Guard, okay. Against this Minus Armor, it makes a lot of sense. And it's not all Minus Armor, but, you know, a bit of a problem. Looks like Ember Spirit might be going for another little bit of a, uh, a BKB here as well. So very defensive items right now out of Cloud9. They don't have a ton of damage, so just going to try and keep them off of their towers as long as possible. Maybe keep the next Aegis as well. They're able to take the next Aegis. That's pretty huge. Oh, Tusk is going to end up getting the Snowball off. None of those stuns end up connecting. Chuan now. It's going to be the one that's in the middle of all of this. Walrus well, Punch down on top of them, but SVG is going to die here. Queen of Pain ends up getting that kill. Evading the Bounty Ruin at the end for good measure. Happy is a clam got to say about that one. Mother yet again, just 
be comfortable to be sitting on the big lead that she's been able to get. And again, you know, you get this Midas up on this Broodmother. It, they've been able to stay with this one. It shows the power of Cloud9 and their ability to, you know, consistently farm, find that, despite the fact that they're down 15 kills. It's very impressive. Ooh, thought about it. There's a chance. They are going to end up using the ulti here. Brax gets hit by the Fissure. Nice blink as four Staff by the Earthshaker. Now he's going to have another chance to be able to catch this one. BKB does end up getting popped. Laguna Blade, the turnaround. Oh, but the Fiend's Grip is too good. Now Slaughter wants to be able to get this one. Is going to burn last second. And the Twan jump forward with the Enchant Totem is going to be enough to get that kill. TP's away before the Tusk comes back in. Is going to toss on out another Ice Shards. Blocking off the retreat, but it looks like... Root might be comfortable going for this one, though. It's going to call it good at this point in time. 1,600 gold swing, 3,300 EXP. And the end result, nobody dead for Root and two taken down, the Slardar and the Lina. Cloud9. And now ready to move on in here and take on down the big bad Roshan. See how they're able to make it happen. Looks like Earthshaker might even be going for... Uh, an AC here? Is that honestly what he's going to be going for? Not exactly sure. Certainly lots of options, but with the Sheba's Guard already up on the Queen of Pain, that doesn't seem entirely likely. Maybe I'm missing something here. Oh, you know what? I bet it's a Lotus Orb. That would make sense. That really makes sense. All right. BKB now up on the Broodmother. They recognize that this is going on now. We do have, oh god, the Nightmare down. This is going to be a Fiend's Grip in a second as well. Tusk is going to get caught out. They don't even need to use the Fiend's Grip. Yeah, it's not up. He, he's just dead. It's now up on the Spectre, jumping forward. They are going to be able to get the Silence off on the Ember Spirit, but after the fact, man, Style Illusion away. He's going to be able to walk away from that one fine. And emboldened by their recent win in the Roche Pit, Looks like Root Gaming might be ready to take this one. Looking in a strong position to be winning game one of this series. Best of three, as I mentioned, this is the upper bracket. So the loser of this series is not knocked out, but does have to go down to the lower bracket to face what I believe is Pain Gaming up, uh, the winner of Pain Gaming and Elite Wolves. And this is the part where spec starts to become really scary. Manta style, as well as Diffuso Blade. Amp damage down on top of the Quap. We do have the Remnant up on the high ground as well. He's going to end up going on back to base, though, after the first Remnant is dropped. They ping it on out, thinking that he might still be there, but he is not. Brax ends up hitting with the Light Strike Ray on top of the Queen of Pain. Nice Force Staff to be able to get that Spectre on out of there. Well done by the Earthshaker, keeping his buddy alive. Not wanting to let this game get out of hand. And again... The problem that you might end up seeing is Cloud9 can turn this back around in just a second. They're very, very comfortable being able to take a fight now, I think. As long as they get the initiate, jump forward is able to catch on to the Bane. This is not the person that you want to end up getting onto immediately. Sonic wave down as well. The spec did get the tower and finally going to start tearing these people apart. Slardar falls. Queen of Pain able to take down the Tusk. BKB is up on MSS as well. It does look like spec's going to be perfectly fine throughout all of this, though. Echo Slam on the back lanes, able to hit onto the Ember Spirit. He's going to end up falling. I believe Silence is going to take him down. The Aegis is popped, but to what end? No hero has still died at this point in time for Root Gaming. Four dead, meanwhile, for Cloud9. And it looks like they're going to be ready to take high ground here. A huge gold swing, and it felt like it was inevitable to a certain point. Lotus Orb now down on top of the Silencer as well. So much farm on these heroes. 20k net worth on this Spectre. This is what happens when you end up getting that Radiance up on that hero. Devastating to fight against. Really starting to fall now. EXP and net worth graph very, very heavily into the favor of Root. Same time, we do have Drip having to push on out both of these other lanes. So they are going to be able to get both of the barracks, but at the same time, they're not able to push for more because the rest of them aren't pushed in. And Tier 1 Tower is still standing in the top lane. So, all right, Cloud9 still in a comfortable position. Uh, over these next couple of minutes until we have the next Roshan, I feel like what we're probably going to be seeing is gradually Root just trying to take over the rest of this map. You take a look at the wards, though, and Vision really is not there for Root. They need to get a smoke on out to be able to place down the wards. And meanwhile, for Cloud9, I mean, you take a look at it. They've got pretty great vision, especially considering they're behind right now. You want these wards to be defensive. So I think this is perfectly fine where they're placed at. All right. Lena. Blink Dagger up, as we talked about earlier. Aghanim Scepter, BKB, and the Yule Scepter. Tusk still sitting pretty poor. 
MSS hasn't really been able to get much further in terms of his item progression. No buybacks were used in that last fight, but the only person that has it currently is the Broodmother as well. And with those illusions on out, it looks like they were trying to see what they could do to maybe find a fight there. Oh, this could be a problem. Do get the Fiend's Grip before the crush. Slargar is going to end up going down. This is not the engagement that you want. We're going in yet again. Derp Derp's going to end up falling here. I do believe in a second, maybe. No, still staying alive. Tusk is the one that falls instead. And chasing now after MSS, he's going to have to drop on down those nets and move away. But... Oh, Yule Scepter ends up connecting. Brax doesn't want to go for this one. Realizing the inherent danger of his situation is going to blink away. Fight recap. Another win for Root Gaming. 11-35. to 35. Look at the odds before this game. Very, very heavily favored into Cloud9. And Root has just been able to come on in with this relatively new roster. MSS is going to end up getting caught again. Look at the four staff as well. Oh, he might not be able to have enough, though. No Shiva's guard now, but the Bane comes in, is going to be able to lay down the Echo Slam after the Orchid finishes. And Earthshaker kicks off Broodmother. It's so hard to deal with the Earthshaker once he's been able to get this type of farm. And again, this all harkens back to that early play there. You know, I, I was confused and not entirely sure about the Earthshaker play, but when he did end up going into that offlane position, all of a sudden it made a little bit more sense. You get those Aftershock levels up. You make sure that he's going to be able to sustain and lead against the Brood, and then afterwards you just shove him on over there. He does whatever the heck he wants and is able to keep the Brood off the tower. That really shuts down the farm that you're going to be able to have. Oh, a little bit of miscommunication there. I think that, uh, I don't know if they can get this kill. The heart is up. They're dropping everything. The Manta style, and he's just going to walk away. Oh, Spectre, two farms right now. Doesn't have a haunt, but is going to be able to run on into the forest. Is he actually going to be able to get out of this one? They're expending so much, and Schwan comes in. Oh, they do get the kill, finally. But not after losing the Lena. They dropped absolutely everything on him. And at the end, they weren't able to completely get him cleanly. They lost one. Might lose Schwan for it as well, though. Does end up hitting the Fissure. Oh, four staff in two seconds. He does also have those boots of travel. Glimmer cape away. Nicely done there. He's going to be able to make his way out of there. With Sand King coming on in as well, he's going to make sure he's fine. In the meantime, the Queen of Pain pushing on down this bottom lane. Like, it's a big win for them, but the fact that they had to use all of those abilities really shows how dangerous this is. <laughs> Let's turn around and the Echo Shell coming on out. This Quap is going to be able to run on out of here. Very nicely done. The Crystallis is going to be coming out in a second from the Ember Spirit. He's actually been able to, with that last kill on the Ember or on the Spectre, really help out his team a lot. Spectre, worth noting, does have buyback currently, as well as Heart, Manta, Radiance, and Diff Blade. Very comfortable where he's at. And I think that at this point, the next fight that they end up taking, maybe once this Roshan is respawned yet again, is going to be the terminate factor because you're going to be able to have initiation right on in I, I think that they take the Roche fight I think that Root are going to be able to win that one I was looking for the Brood going to be there this time around the Brood has really been having to force back into her own jungle like it's too scary to be able to go anywhere else honestly um but what I'm mentioning about this is that if you do get the Aegis up on the Spectre, obviously the first life you go through, it, it's going to take forever for them to be able to take you down. And then after the fact, you're coming back with the Aegis. And then after that, again, you got the buyback with the Haunt back in. Three lives on that hero. Oh, S Slardar, we knew you well. Does end up falling 1437. Just going to die to the Orchid burn. Root looking very, very solid. Net worth... Covering towards that 20k mark, EXP, 2500. I'm really, really impressed, impressed with Root's gameplay here. And Cloud9 doing everything that they possibly can to stay in this game. They're going to push on out all of the lanes, try and take objectives wherever possible, make sure that the Broodmother is doing her things. The question is, is it going to be enough? And it's starting to feel like it might not be. This lane's going to get pushed out yet again. Plus side is that obviously for Cloud9, Root is going to have to come back and defend this. You have to respect the Broodmother. You can't just leave this lane alone. And here come the TPs on back, playing this very, very safe. Control Dota. Do end up hitting onto the Ember Spirit. He is going to be able to BKB away from that one. And with the Haunt already used... Oh, never mind. Reality forward. But Ember was in the fountain. You don't want a reality into that. <laughs> There's the TP on out. So Haunt used now... A little bit of a gift coming the way of Cloud9. 
It does mean that the Roshan's going to be a little bit more difficult for Root to take. So maybe the makings of a comeback, potentially. It's a bit of a long shot, but certainly not unheard of. Let's take a look at a few items, see if there's any new progression coming out here. Slaughter's still not quite able to get into his BKB. Broodmother, the Orchid, the BKB, the Vlads, as well as the Midas. Oh, lose a Courier. Not the biggest deal in the world, but certainly not what you want to have happen. Ember Spirit, Crystallis, Battle Fury, Mantis Style. Bane is just living in the Roche Pit now. And that's actually the Daedalus finished off as well for the Ember. Lina, the Aghanim Scepter, as well as the Yules and Tusk, still not a whole heck of a lot. I will mention that the Lotus Orb being picked up by Derp Derp is pretty huge. Of course, Spectre just continuing to be this ridiculous farm monster. Earth Shaker in the Roche Pit now. Let's have Force Travels as well as the Shivas. Queen of Pain working towards that Refresher, almost there. Really wants to be able to finish that one off, but at the same time, you kind of got to save for buyback. At this point, I feel like Cloud9 know what's going on. They realize that Roche is probably being taken. It was a middle-of-the-road Roshan timer, and now they're just going to push on out this top lane and hope to be able to draw their attention elsewhere. Maybe get a little bit more farm on these heroes as well. Finish off the key items, farm for buyback. They are getting close on the Ember Spirit. Well, not too close. Maybe with the split push, they're going to be able to keep them off of the towers until the buyback comes around. That's kind of their only hope at this point, I think. So if they keep these lanes pushed out, right now you're going to have to send Root back to deal with the top lane, as well as deal with, well, not really the mid lane, because it's continuously pushing. Really, the top lane is going to be the, the key thing. And that's going to mean that Ember is going to be able to farm on up his buyback, hopefully. Only 648 gold away from finishing that off and playing so safe right now. This is really, really smart by him. Not even wanting to go on down there and last hit the creeps in lane. Just slide a fist over and call it good. So this is going to keep Root stuck up in their base for a second at least. I've seen the waters. 1437 getting a little bit antsy. Oh, Queen of Pain. Oh, might be able to find the spider here. There's the Shiva's Guard pop. BKB as well, though. Need to get out of there. Thankfully, ends up killing that uh, little creep off. But I think that the Queen of Pain's going to be able to right-click her down. So the spider did good things there. You were able to take on out the individual creep that was getting TP'd in on by, I believe, the Earthshaker, which would have been the kill. But, uh, particularly with the gem. But still wasn't able to get out of there just because... Can't really man fight the Queen of Pain at this point, and looks like Quap is going to content herself with the Refresher. After that kill on the Brood, she should be able to arm on a buyback before this next big team fight. And looking to want to go down for the Tier 2 tower here, probably into the Tier 3 after the fact. Pushing in all of these lanes, playing it absolutely safe, very disciplined Dota right now. Worthy tribute. Chuan does have cheese. <laughs> it's good to have. You know, the Spectre just continuing to run around here, ramp it. 5,000 gold in the bank <laughs> can kind of go for whatever you want, but with no courier for another couple seconds, it's become a little bit more difficult. Oh, there's the Fiend's Grip, as well as the Earthshaker coming on in. Easy as pie. SVG ends up going down the Tusk. That's a pickoff. That is very comfortable moving on in for the high ground. Again, this bottom lane is pushing, but at this point, I don't know if they really care. They might be comfortable just moving forward with this one. Slardar, in the meantime, was going on in for another jump stun, but wasn't able to make it happen. The Illusion's chasing after the Ember Spirit here now. They're going to be ready to push on down this Tier 2 tower. Soon after, with the Aegis up, like, how do you fight into this? The, the heart is just so much regen. You're always going to be ready to go on into another fight. Destroys the tower. Maybe going to be able to catch onto the Ember Spirit. He does get Diff Blade on up. Manta Style is up as well as the BKB. Global Silence comes down after the fact, and there's the Manta Style off. So plays and counter plays abound. Slaughter isn't going to be able to have a stun for a second. Bottom lane getting pushed in again by this Broodmother. At some point in time, you got to deal with the pink elephant in the room. How do you fight against the Spectre? It's sort of, it's coming. <laughs> the spec is coming. He's going to TP back, ready to haunt in for the fight whenever they want it. To the lane gets pushed out, that's probably what we're going to see. The other thing here, I guess, is that Spectre doesn't necessarily want to go in without a Manta style. Because if you do end up getting some type of sun, some type of silence coming out, particularly an orchid from the Broodmother, that's a point where you get a little bit more vulnerable. Oh god, Basher is going to be the item as well. This is petrifying. I really think another item that would be pretty helpful might be the Butterfly. The reason that I think the Basher is pretty good, obviously, you're going to be able to build this into Abyssal as well. 
And how much actually net worth above does she have? She's getting close to Abyssal, so they might wait until Abyssal. But there's a couple of things. One, you get a little bit more HP from it. Great with Dispersion. Uh, and while there is a lot of damage that can be dealt, and the fact that uh, um, Butterfly is sometimes another item that's picked up. Oh, wait, hold that thought. Haunt coming on in. They're going to be able to chase on after your Diff Blade down on top of the Slarder. He's going to end up falling another Reality forward onto Brax. Not going to be able to get him. And Slarder actually didn't die either. He's going to actually be able to TP out of here. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. 1437 below 7 is really what his name should be. Very nicely done. Just getting on out of there. Like it ain't no thing. So Haunt committed for that one. A little bit of a slip up in what has otherwise been a very clean game by Root. Back to what I was mentioning there. If you consider what the Spectre has, uh, some people might be wanting to go for a Butterfly at this point in time in the game. Now, while I do think that that's a pretty good pickup, the problem that you're going to end up dealing with is that you don't have the... A lot of the damage from Cloud9 right now is coming out from the Cleave of the Ember Spirit, as well as the Laguna Blade from the Lena. Also, of course, the, the right click and everything else that comes out from there. But I think the majority of it, the Laguna Blade, oh god, Brax is going to end up falling yet again. Another right click, and he is just torn apart. Light Strike Ray hits, but to what point? So the Basher, you get a little bit more damage, or a little bit more HP out of it. You also get another huge team fight. MSS is going to fall. Lotus Orb on top of the Snowball. That's what I'm talking about. Bane going to be able to stay alive here. A Glimmer Cape up by SVG. They might be able to turn this one back around. We do end up hitting another Nightmare. He's going to fall orchid everything down i don't even think i need to talk about butterfly anymore this game might be pretty close to over here the main point i'm going to say is that the basher you're able to build into abyssal it's huge for being able to lock down the ember spirit the other key component is that it's going to give you a little bit more hp 20k net worth lead exp uh roughly the same there's the abyssal finished off doesn't even need it the ages did expire but with the heart this is still going to be really hard to kill also has buyback on the specter bkb is out as well but there's the global silence keep him alive it does look like bane's going to be able to get four staffed out and stay alive through that one very nicely done by him another jump forward brax is going to fall in just a second. Lots of damage being dealt out by Ritu, but there's the haunt back in. Refresher up on the Queen of Pain. Spectre kills the Slardar. Soon to fall is going to be MSS. And last but not least, good old Mr. Ember. Triple kill for the Spectre to win that game. And Root Gaming, take game one in this best of three. Thank you very much for watching and for putting up with the FPS issues. I'm going to try my very best to fix those in the next round. Uh, and we'll be back in just a second with game two.